run, my cousin Bivar shouted. And then he shoved me forward and began sprinting. So I ran, and they chased after us. The young African men who had come to burn Bivash's house in Inamda. Because they had been manipulated into believing that these Indians had taken their land. When in fact it had been designated for the brown man by the apartheid government. And they had nowhere else to go. And now these Indians had built pretty white houses on property that once belonged to their African ancestors. And should have held their pretty white houses. And some of these Indians were thriving now, building successful businesses and exploiting black labor. A few even drove silver BMWs with Tri-Star Magni. And then I turned around in terror as they drew nearer. And I recognized one of them. It was Cecil, our friend Cecil, who whom Bivash and I played hours of football every time I stayed over during the summer holidays. He looked so angry. He shouted something menacing in Sulu. And then just as they were about to tear our flesh with their pangas and batons, my uncle Suresh's van appeared. We threw ourselves into the back and escaped. But they burned Bivash's house down that day and many more over the next few days. Ah, I can see that some of you are becoming restless already. Just let me finish the story, please. You see why I'm telling it short? Anyway, many of the Indians from Inanda, including my relatives, were forced to move in with family and friends from Duff's Road and other neighboring Indian towns. And as the terror threatened to spread, these districts began organizing themselves and preparing to take revenge. It didn't matter which black man they found loitering now. All darkies are dangerous now, they said. The stories I heard, hawkers, gardeners, factory workers, so many innocent black men just going about their business in the district, humiliating and assaulting. And it's this one time, you know, we visited our relatives in Duff's Road. I saw them crab Bongan. Bongali, the petrol lieutenant they'd known for a decade. He was supplying the invaders with more information, they said. He was planning more attacks. Chop his head! Hold him and I'll take it out! I couldn't believe it. It was my father, who had never committed an act of violence in his entire life. Now he was thirsting for blood. And then just as he raised his bush knife, my uncle Suresh flung himself in front of Bongani. My uncle, who, whose arm they had broken, whose house they had burned, pleaded for mercy. We can't sink so low, he said. We're better than this. This man is innocent. I don't know who's guilty, he said, or of what they may be guilty exactly. But we have to find another way to get justice. There's a bigger struggle, and we are part of it. I'll never forget those words that my uncle spoke on the 22nd of May, 1984. My matric year. The violence stopped completely soon after that, from both sides. But obviously, relations between the two communities were badly damaged. This is just like 1949, many people said. We'll never really be united again. I believe their words. I believe what my uncle had said. There's a bigger struggle. But that was four years ago, and it wasn't in our town, so why am I telling you about it now? Because something very similar happened here in Chatswood three weeks ago. Starting with another fire, this time right here in your favorite hangout, the dome. We began chasing a black boy again, because we blamed him for the fire. But he didn't start it, we did. You know, I remember running after that mob who were chasing after Becky. And the image of my father swinging that bush knife came into my head again. And I heard my uncle's words. I shouted for them to stop, but they wouldn't listen. It was happening again. 
They beat Becky senseless when they finally caught up with him. I couldn't stop them. And then they went home to resume the role of the good son. They said they beat him up because he started the fire and destroyed their precious nightclub. But that's not true. Sumeya told me that the Preggy and his drunken friends started the fire. Because they didn't stamp out their cigarettes. She alerted them to it. But they acted too slowly. They were too pissed. But running after Becky he sobered them up. And they beat him. Because the girls thought that he was much sexier on the dance floor than they were. And because he argued with Preggy, and Preggy told him to get out of our place. And worst of all, because he French kissed Preggy's sister, and she liked it. Yeah, I can see that my words are making some of you uncomfortable. That's good. That's good. Because the backlash from Becky's family and community will only get worse over the coming weeks. We all know that Becky's father worked here for many years for the Maharaj family. He was part of this community. And he will not accept this meekly. They beat up the wrong black boy this time. And so we may have started another little war. How can we do this? We're supposed to be fighting the apartheid regime. You know, Sumeya asked me to talk to you today. She said it doesn't matter that not a lot of you will come. Some of you will help us. And the idea I want to tell you about now, that, that was her idea. I told you you should speak to them. What? Says he wants to listen, that I'm the talker. And so I'm talking to you. And there's only a dozen of you. But that's a start. You are the future leaders of this community. And I hope you want to shout out like me and like Sumeya. Stop ruining our community, you common thugs. Stop representing us in such a pathetic light to the world, especially to our black brothers and sisters. I mean, Chatsworth is the birthplace of so many anti apartheid activists. It's their spirit that flows through our veins. We will not soil their legacy. What do you say? So let's be honest. Let's acknowledge our wrongdoing. And let's do what Sumeya says. Let's not wait for the dilly-dallying elders of our community. Let you take the initiative. We'll ask Becky's family to come over here for what Sumeya calls a restorative justice process, where we try to find a peaceful way to get justice for Becky. But we also try to find a way for reconciliation and transformation without destroying anyone. You know, this process represents the best of what the Zulu and the Indian communities have revealed about their culture over the years. And then we make a pledge that no black person will ever be treated in such a callous way in Chatsworth again. If all goes well, then we rebuild the dome. Not to a nightclub again, no, no, listen, I like shaking my ass too, but we can do that in many places. No, no, we build a youth center. That's what we really need. And a center for activism too, where we can plan a real response, together with our black brothers and sisters, to the apartheid regime. So, so, so you're leaving, Raji? Okay. Oh, you too, Sandy. Yeah, I expected that. <laughs> You've always thought I was a weirdo. I'm always going on about fighting a party, so you go. I know that some of you will stay. I can see the passion in your eyes. We'll do this. We will. I suggest we call the new place Freedom. Yeah, that's my idea, not Sumeya's. We will not run again in our neighborhood. Not after anyone. And not from anyone.
time for decolonized education and reasonable fees. Hear our call. These must fall. Yeah, Zamin. Yeah, Constable Zamin. I'm not a poetry major, but at least I believe in what I'm saying and what I'm doing. What do you believe in, black man? Assaulting your black brother on behalf of the white man, wearing his uniform and doing his dirty work. Don't listen to Constable Zamin. You just do your job. Our Grogu got some company for you, yeah? Another one of your brown brothers. Yeah. Hey, but this one is not on my team. He's scoring on goal. What are you talking about? I saw this one before I accidentally landed in your arms, Sergeant Mugu. You were swearing the police, then suddenly you were shoving the students. When you gently carried me away, he was in a scuffle with Comrade's boo. When I caught him, he was busy beating up one of my men, so he's the same shit as you. Maybe he's part of the third force. What fucking third force? The same one your white bus is designed to play both sides. Yeah. Don't come here with more of your bullshit concept and throw there's no third force. There's just a group of unruly students who do not have to negotiate who are throwing stones at police officers without provocation who are on the rampage mainly because they're not prepared for the exams. That's what's really going on here. What a simple little world you live in, Sergeant. How confusing it's all going to be for you very soon. We'll make sure of that. Now, I'd like to see what you got in store for me. In the meantime, you and your new charo friend can amuse each other with more concepts. I've got real work to do. You play. Let me tell you what I told your comrade here. Yeah. I chained you to this rail and never put you in the van yet because I want you to get a good look at your comrade, specifically yeah. that group there. Get a great look. Look how they throw stones at us and insult us and throw bricks at us and they dare call us the thugs. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see you again soon in Bravo. Come on, Constable Damini. Call for more boys in blue. In fact, why don't you call for more boys in khaki? Tell them to bring their caspers and use us for target practice again! What are you looking at? So what's your story? Why did you punch Comrade's boo? Answer me. You know, I supported your call for real transformation. I want an African campus. I also campaigned for Prof. Desik and Rennie to be principal. But now, just eight months later, you call for his resignation. You shout, these must fall. But just a few months ago, you said, give him time. You said he'd be a great agent for transformation. Nine years ago. And the white Indian professor who stood up for him must go. But nothing said about the black academics to support him. And now you say that there's too many Indians in medical school. And some of your SRC members say we must go back to India. What's it's funny! I didn't hear your support for our transformation agenda. Where were you campaigning? In your backyard? I remember seeing you sitting at some SRC meetings like a mouse. And our president said he should recruit you for the good work you were doing in Chatsworth. And you refused, Kathy, and you still sat in those meetings. And whenever it got difficult, uncomfortable, I saw you walk out, and I began to wonder, who is this guy really? Is he working with a bad force? What a load of shit. I couldn't do more. I had to swat every day to make sure I passed med school. So my student loans didn't become astronomical. You don't know me, Sandile. All right, Logan. Tell me then. Who are you? Aren't you tired of words? Don't you want action? Yes! But explain your action today. Why did you punch Comrade Smoke? He was... He and his friends. Again. They always do. They were intimidating the Indian and white students who didn't want to join the protest. Circling them like animals. Ah. And the police didn't give a shit. They were just waiting for any students to throw something at them and then they would attack them. You know these women who didn't want to protest? Yeah, they were women. I was so confused and, and scared. I sympathized with them. I told Sigu to stop intimidating them. He didn't listen to me. So I struck him. I just wanted your comrades to leave these students alone. They were behaving like thugs. Some of them are thugs. Our thugs. Appointed by us to make sure that all the students join our protest action. To show that we are united. You see, I don't give a shit if they were scared. They benefit from everything we work tirelessly for. We represent the whole student body, including the privileged who are always so intimidated when we simply ask them to stand with us. So you assume these women are privileged? How do you know your fellow students? I know the students who go through a lecture with nothing in their stomach. I know them too. Fuck you. You know that one of the women that Cebu was intimidating is pregnant. 
Did he see any pregnant women? Oh, yeah, your ego trip wouldn't include that, sir. This has nothing to do with my ego. Sigur threw her to the floor. That should not happen. Do you know if she's... Is she hurt? She must be hurt. I'll deal with Sigur. Then maybe after that, I can go back to Little India on campus. You know Little India, hey, Logan? I'm not from there. But you know it! It's where so many of my Indian brothers and sisters hang out. And when I went to talk to them about the failings of Prof. Desik and Reddy, how we had in lowered fees, how it only made conservative appointments to management, how it dictated to students like his white predecessor, and I asked them to join our protest, some of them looked at me as if I was a stupid farm boy who wanted them to join them in a mindless land grab. A couple of the boys said to me, you wanted him, now you must face another one of your bad choices. And then they walked away as if this had no impact on them. And then this one girl who couldn't even look at me straight in the face, I was so fucking repulsive to her. Oh, beneath her! She said, just show some respect for the women who don't want to join you. Don't hurt us like cattle, we are not animals. Then she grabbed her boyfriend's arm and left. Didn't even give me the chance to reply. Believe me, I know Indian conservatism much better than you. I've been surrounded by it for the whole 26 years of my life. My parents were a little more open-minded. I wonder what I would... The point is that some of us would not set foot in little India. I'm not an Indian. What? I'm not an Indian. Not as you define it. Yeah, I eat bunny chows, but I don't like brandy and coke. I drink castle lager. <laughs> I don't support the Indian crickety. I don't support the South African crickety. Oh. Not until there's real transformation. Wow, wow. wow. I live with my parents. I'll take care of them when they go home. Yeah. But I don't have a cousin who fixed me a holiday job in his department store. Yeah. I take a taxi to campus. Oh. My father's old Fiat doesn't have mad wheels on a sound system that's more expensive than the car. <laughs> yes, like many Indians, I'm studying medicine. But I'm not going to emigrate to London when I qualify. I want to serve my African brothers and sisters. Now you tell that to your comrades next time they mock me, calling me a Lamington because I speak eloquently, and asking me to sponsor them a Briani Chow. Hey! Look at that! Look at your bag, I'm taking these two to the station. Your man fired live ammunition. No, live ammunition was fired. You, you're coming with me to talk to your conference. Not he did not. They grabbed one of our men, they're holding him ransom, and they're taking to beat him up unless we leave the campus. So why don't you leave? We're not letting you ask for all this campus or the police to ransom. Mm. You are the SRC vice president. I know where your president is, so you are going to tell your comrades to release our men. I'm not going to do that. Come on, you're a lawyer. Be sensible, yeah? Fuck off! Ah. I'm not a that cop is a serious thing. Like I told you before, I don't cooperate with conniving cops. I'm not afraid of you. Leave me alone. 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 Leave me
beginning to see the merit in our D's must fall campaign. But you think we must give him more time? I'm open to further discussion on the matter. Maybe you must quit medicine and take up politics full time. Listen, do you think that the police are actually... That the students are they actually holding a cop? I don't care! The cops shouldn't have been called to campus. Yeah, yeah, I agree, but I mean, the protest is not going to get any sympathy if they actually capture the policemen. They were not going to get any sympathy anyway. Because the university management and the press will all spin the story. We must still report good legal. See if we can use that as a barbing chip. Okay, now you sound like a lawyer. How's your head? Throbbing. Ah. So when do you graduate, Logan? Uh, next year, hopefully. <laughs> Dr. Logan Pillay, hey? Uh, your parents will be proud. Ah, uh, well, I still have to do internship. You know, I have to do two years of BSc before I can even get into medicine. What about you? When do you finish law school? This year, I hope. I took the scenic route. I should have finished last year. Uh, but you had so much work to do for the SRC. Uh, my mother is hopeful now. Uh, soon she'll be chairing a son's graduation in the main hall, hall of Devon University. My whole family will be shouting, singing, dancing. I can just picture it. And there'll be another ceremony next year. Nelson Mandela will become the first president of our new country. It'll be our world soon. So much of it will still be their world. They control so much. Another year of negotiations with thieves and murderers. They killed our commander a few months ago. They murdered Comrade Rani and we still forgave them. I'm sorry. I'm losing control. I want... I would like to invite you to a special place. Will they be girls? Yeah, they'll be girls, not that kind of place. Briani? It's always Briani, but only after the speeches. Where are you from, anyway? Glass. Glass? Listen, listen. That's right near my district. I want you to come to a place we call Freedom. It's a, it's a youth center and a center for activism as well. You know, I mean, uh, we're doing some good work there in Chatswit and the neighboring districts. Slowly we're building a relationship with the Zulu communities who live there. And last month we even had some UDF guys as special guests, huh? So will you come next month, maybe? Huh? Speak to us, you know, meet all the guys. We'll see. Uh, I need to get to know you better. Logan. Then maybe I can see about Free Dome. But I'm happy to hear about it. I've been to your district a few times. To Ali's takeaway for the Saturday chicken briyani special. It's me and the bras from Mlaz. What a chow. And the old man always chucks in four hazelnut surprise <laughs> milkshakes for free. And his wife, the auntie tells the funniest stories. Good people. They are. Just walk a few kilometers down the road and you'll find freedom. First, let me walk to the clinic. So me, I was saying, if your eyes is all I can see, you leave a lot to my imagination, let me tell you. <laughs> What's that, man? Eh? Oh, this thing is on. <laughs> sound one, two, hello, sound one, two. Muscle bang it, okay. <laughs> I know what a lot of you are thinking. What is Anil Maharaj doing, making a speech about freedom? Sure. You all know about my charity drives and my work with the elderly, but what have I done for the youth, you might ask? Well, that is about to change. You see, four years ago, when Bafana Bafana won the African Cup of Nations, my boy, Finesh, was born. And it was Frido, which inspired, I don't know, maybe even directly contributed to that event, the happiest day in the lives of my wife and me, let me explain. But 1995, Frido had developed very nicely, and I had swung by on a few occasions, listened to Logan play and Sumaya Hussain, <laughs> and I was impressed. 
I felt it was becoming a special place for our youth, but I didn't realize that Frido had real magic, not until that night, you see. <laughs> Nita and I were on our way back from the movies. And we uh, stopped at Ali's takeaway to grab a couple of hazelnut surprise milkshakes. And I don't know, I felt uh, compelled, propelled by some invisible force to drive to Freedom and have the milkshakes there, taste the evening atmosphere there. So uh, after a while, I don't know, we felt a surge of passion. <laughs> and we just let loose, man, right outside Freedom. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure we're not the only couple to do that inside and outside freedom, eh, Bobby? You, you did it inside and outside. What a man. <laughs> anyway, Nita couldn't fall pregnant for eight years. We tried everything. And believe me, we tried everything, Bobby. <laughs> but no. But no. Then a few weeks later, we discovered that she was going to have a child. My boy, Vinesh! was conceived at freedom. I know a lot of you think I'm overreaching. It's coincidence, you say, but let me tell you, my boy always asks me to bring him here to freedom. He'd rather come here than go to the fun fair. And when he's here, he is so calm. Let me tell you, Malaiti can be a rascal, but when he's here, he is calm and at peace. And he loves listening to the people. Yeah, Logan will tell you. So what I want to tell you is, I want to invest in freedom. I want to celebrate our youth. I'm not running away to Amklanga like so many of my friends did when they made some money. No! I'm staying here in the town I was born in and working with the people who helped shape my life. I'm hoping to do some big developments here at Freedom in my boy's name. You all uh, have a nice gym, but we can make it better and we can build a bigger library. I'm also, here. Yeah, listen to this one. I'm also doing a feasibility study to see if the land adjacent to Freedom can be turned into a small football stadium. I knew you'd like that one. Yeah, and my boy will too. And the municipality is backing me also. One thing for sure, we will not try to become too big. We will always honor the legacy of Logan and Sumia and uh, yeah, yeah, Sandile as well. You know, I. I may not always agree with their politics, but they are bringing different communities together, and I want Chatswood to be a multicultural place. So, I want your permission to start the project. Hey, I'm excited. This is the right time to do this. We're in the last few months of the millennium, and I believe that this is a time of rebirth. I know some of you are worried about the prophets of doom. Don't listen to them. The world is not going to end. We can make it a better world, together. So the world didn't end. The sun shines on freedom again. Let's make the new millennium better than the old. <coughs> Cheers. Well, some party, eh? I didn't expect so many people to come and to party so hard. Some partied a little too hard. Oh, yes. I've never seen a meal like that. Singing, dancing, <laughs> drinking. Eating. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what got into it. I've never heard of him being a wife abuser. <coughs> you don't hear about things like that. I mean, what a hypocrite he is. He says his son is so connected to freedom. He says he wants to bring in the new millennium of Chatsworth into the new millennium. He says the first young man that his wife talks to, he becomes violent. A new millennium and the same old spouse's story. I don't think he can hold his drink. <laughs> it's a good thing you grabbed a hold of him and, you know, wrestled him to the ground. I mean, he was going berserk. Do you remember what you said to me after that? about the feeling you got. And I felt an energy surge through me. Yes, like a trance, you said. What were you talking about? Or was it the whiskey talking? I admit I haven't had that much whiskey in a while. But I knew what I was saying, because I knew what I felt. It was incredible. This powerful energy surged through my body. <laughs> yeah. It was like 
like something majestic was in control of me. And I was able to lift up Anil so easily. He was a fairly big guy, but it was like lifting a baby. Uh. And then when, when, I, when I talked to him, you know, tried to calm him down, it was like some kind of spirit was talking through me. And you think that this place made this happen? I don't know. That's what you said last night. Yeah, yeah, I think that freedom called the spirit. Maybe. <laughs> that's just... <laughs> that's crazy talk. I mean, you hate the abuse of women. He was slapping his wife, so you found the extra strength and courage. Ah, there's no spirit. This place has no... Look, I love freedom too, but it has no metaphysical power. Sandile, why are you questioning this so much? I just surrendered to you. Did you ever experience that before at any time? Here, I mean. No, I'm not feeling it now. It was just in that moment. Come on, bro. We are Africans. We know these things happen. <laughs> Welcome to the new millennium. Sorry for overstaying my welcome. How's your head? I think I'm still a little bit on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, uh, gentlemen, um, sorry about last night. Uh, I don't know what came over me. It was as if I was possessed. I know, I know, you think I'm crazy, but uh, I've never had such a rage before. I mean, I'm not a violent person, you know what I mean? To strike your own wife, I've never done such a despicable thing. Hey. Thanks for stepping in, Logan, and bringing me back to my senses. Go back home to your wife, Maharaj. Show her that you're sorry. I will. But see, I still want to develop freedom, man. Eh? Please, let me do this. Don't let what happened last night change your mind. I, I, I know, I know the feasibility study says we can't go to the football stadium, but there's still so much we can do. Like my proposal. Listen, we're not going to discuss this now, Anil. Committee will discuss it next week. But you've been sitting on my proposal for three months. Why are you taking so Just long? leave it for now. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that I can't believe this violence happened here, man. <laughs> I've grown to love this place, and you know how my boy feels, yeah? Maybe this millennium is not a rebirth. Maybe we will whistle it. Don't reach too many conclusions on day one. Just go home and get some rest. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll talk to you again next week, Logan. Enjoy your New Year's, gentlemen. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to support his development plan. Let's talk to Smeya and the others next week, eh? See what they have to say. Listen, maybe we should get on home too now. Ah, let me help you clean up. No, it's okay. My cousins are coming later to help. They promised it's cool. Sure. Thanks for staying over last night, Sandile. I really wanted to be here this morning. Ooh. <clears throat> I wanted to be here. Ah. Oh. Thank you for inviting me to free Dome. Back in the day, when we were students, we made something special, something simple but meaningful. <coughs> we did. And I make this pledge that every New Year's, I'll meet you here and we'll toast to our place. <coughs> Let's have one more beer. Should you be calling your, your mother now? Huh? Tell me what time you're coming over for lunch. Apologizing for not making it last night. Huh? I texted her. I'll, I'll go over later. Don't make it like I'm a mommy's boy. You're the one who needs to call your fiance ah. for the new millennium. <laughs> it's a pity she had to leave early last night. I understand. Family commitments. I was enjoying talking to her. She's cool. Wow. The Sandile and Lovo stamp of approval. That's something. So when are you going to get itched? Well, not for a while. Let me enjoy my freedom a little longer. <laughs> Chatsworth. Two thousand. Looks pretty good from here. Peaceful. But, I don't know. Still feels like there's so many people we have to reach. 
And Umlaz is pretty bad too. Those young prostitutes I saw the other day when I was driving here, and the addicts here, and in Umlaz, I don't know if they give a shit about the work we've been doing. We'll have to keep doing it anyway. That's why you must not forget about us now that you are senior advisor to the party. Hey, advocate in Glovo. Don't become a fat guy. You know I won't. Anyway, you can keep me in check. You'll be at the committee meeting on the 15th. Uh, no, listen, I'm not going to make it. It's going to be hectic at the hospital. Oh, you said you'd make the time. We need your skills. Yeah, well, you know what? I'll do what I can when I have a chance. I'm a senior obstetrician now. It's a demanding position. I don't want to help make another failed public institution. That's a bit harsh. Look, I have to do my primary job. Then I can see about helping you guys. This is... I mean, just a few months ago, you were enthusiastic about being on the advisory committee. I've had a change of mind, all right? Things haven't gone the way I hoped they would. What do you mean? I mean, look, your committee members don't see me the way you do. They see a middle-class Indian medical professional. They make the usual assumptions. What are you talking about? You've never sat through an entire committee meeting. You're either called away by the big wigs, or you're talking to them in your cell in the corridors. And when you're gone, your party pals shut me down. Or they listen to my decisions with such mistrust. I wonder if you think I'm a spy for the opposition. Like I once wondered if maybe you're part of the bad force. Come on, bro. Give it more time. I mean, you've only had about half a dozen meetings. They'll accept you soon, because they'll see who you really are. If they don't, I'm forced them to. This is petty party politics, Sunil, and I want no part of it. I want to continue with the work we've been doing here at Freedom. You know, building relationships with different communities, fighting racism, giving youth a voice. You and I still have a lot of work to do together. I don't want these divisions. Look, the party doesn't need this now. This is the time of the African Renaissance. You've heard of the president. Does he think that I'm actually a part of the African Renaissance? What is this now? You sound like the opposition. Of course he thinks you're a part of it. I'm not so sure. His language is interesting. He speaks so much about race. To me, it seems like he wants a hierarchy of blackness in everything. It's far away from the party's vision of a non-racial society. Look, I accept the necessity of affirmative action. I realize that the main focus has to be to lift the black African majority out of poverty. But there are other agendas at play too. Petty categorization continues as always. He's the one charged with the reconstruction. He has to deliver. He has to break white monopoly capital and empower black youth. Well, then maybe here at the party need to cozy up less to big business, not so. It's a difficult balancing act to Yeah, I'm saying it's not straightforward. Honeymoon is over. We're going into the grave. And you have a place there. An important place. Yeah. Promise me one thing, Sandir. Whatever happens in the party, and wherever your work takes you, you won't forget about freedom and what you and I still want to do here. <laughs> Fetch you. No! Just calm down, Sandile. I think I should fetch Dr. Chetty as well. 
Because what he really needs is a psychiatrist. I'm just saying, I over at Dr. Paulson saying that there's nothing wrong with him. Physically, I mean. I'm a diabetic, and it's out of control now. I have chest pains, I'm very ill. Bullshit! You politicians all fall ill and then rush to the hospital when you get quotes. Nurse Philander, you are in no position to be making such statements. I came to a public hospital. I could have hidden away in a private hospital. I trusted you people. I need care, proper care. We'll give you care. You need to go back to the ward. You can take care of me, Logan. Please. I can't take care of you. I'm not your doctor. You won't help me. Betray her. I will betray her. You think I did it? My God, you... I think I'm guilty. <laughs> of course you're guilty. Just like so many of your brothers. Robbie, just on your Dr. Paulson. Alice got some dealer back to his room. No! Stay away from me! Oh, Both of you! Leave him alone! Just get Dr. Paulson! In a moment, Dr. Pillay, just one piece of news for you first. Straight from Edna's Balagazi. The strike's on tomorrow, so you know what to do. I'm gonna do my job. Well, then we can't guarantee your safety. Are you threatening me, Nurse Philander? I've got no fight with you, Doctor. I'm just saying there's a lot of angry workers and they've had enough, so I don't know what some of them will do tomorrow. You've been warned. Hey, they can strike and I can do my job. It doesn't work like that. Not in South Africa, and you know that. What about my patients? Miss Planini especially is in a really difficult situation. Your time is up, Doctor. Hey, uh... Non-functional. They're damaging property and stripping the nurses who don't want to join them in the strike. Stripping the nurses? What's wrong with these people? This is what we've become. I have to fight. I have to fight. Robbie sees me. He thinks he thinks I'm the I'm the corrupt MP and he's the and he's the unappreciated nurses, overworked and underpaid. Look, I can appreciate why he might see you as a target, but he has his hands full right now. So you can wait here. I have to find Glow. Do you share Robbie's views about me? I don't want to do this now. But, but you think I did it? I mean, I can understand if you have doubts about me because I haven't, I haven't kept some of my promises. But you have no doubts. You're certain I did it. I'm not certain about anything right now, Sandile. Especially about who you really are. I'm your friend! <laughs> I'm your friend since 93. I've been out of your life for what? Eight years now. But I'm still your friend. There's no need for this. People drift apart. Circumstances change. Their priorities change. My wife and I have drifted apart. I don't know why exactly, I just know I'm no longer in love with her. So just let this go. We should attend my calls. In the past two weeks, I called you many times. What for? I needed to talk. I wanted to talk to you. Because your party pals abandoned you, eh? Threw you to the wolves. Because I remember that you never judged me. Even if you didn't understand my actions. You know, I thought about our conversation. Our debates, our... Many times. I wondered why you only honored your pledge to take in the New Year freedom twice and then disappeared without even trying to make an excuse. And I tried to get hold of you. So many times. I listened to you speak at rallies and I begged your PA for just a minute of your time, but no, you were too busy. Then I saw you on television and I heard the language of the seasoned politician and I knew He'd become the fat cat he said he never would. I'm not a fat cat! I've made mistakes, but I'm not that. 
I mean, when I called, I was going to explain properly about my absence. More lies! What lies? The, the inconvenient truth! In my head, I thought carefully about everything, but I... I, I don't have the right words now. I, I'm not well. I'm, I'm not myself. Logan! Another side to head nurse for the Kazi today. She's always so quietly efficient, so compassionate, the patient's lover. But today she's on the rampage, smashing equipment, breaking computers, shouting obscenities. The security guard, Mandla, such a charming chap usually, but today when he saw me, he said, Get out of here while you can still walk. And then he smashed the face of another security guard who wouldn't join the protest. So what do we do? I'm waiting for a call from my senior nurse, Mira. He's checking up on Mr. Amini, who's having a difficult pregnancy. Obviously, we don't want to lose the baby. And Mia's going to report back to me. I'll just wait here a bit. You can go back to the ward or leave. I don't know. I don't care. I read in the community newspaper that freedom... No, not freedom, please! I'm just telling you that I read something in the newspaper. I want to know if it's true. Did the municipal committee decide that Anil Maharaj should take over the lease? The article says he wants to turn it into a sports center. The final decision hasn't been made yet. Look, in the last couple of years, I haven't paid as much attention to freedom as I should have. I've been swamped with work. I had to move closer to the hospital because of the late hours I was working. What about Sumeya? She moved to Joburg four years ago. Got an irresistible job off. Oh, even if that hadn't happened, I think she still would have left freedom. You know, she never asked to be a leader. She just got on with the work. But I think she was beginning to feel that some of the new male recruits didn't really value her contribution. It's sad that uh, things turned out that way. I think that maybe, maybe she was the best of us. My cousin Manish has been trying to keep freedom going in the way that I, we, originally had in mind. But the chaps with youth are so indifferent now. And the drug problem, shit. Anyway, he's been trying to recruit people, but there's just a few Indians who are interested. He's trying to get black people, but... So Anil thinks it's best to make it purely a sports center. I think he wants his son to start playing football again, or any sport for that matter, because apparently the light has become a bit weak. Finesh, you must be what now? A teenager? It's 14, I think. And Neil says, Vinesh was inspired by Free Dome. It still inspires me, Logan. I don't want the vision we once had to die, you know? You know, when things got a bit more hectic at the party, I told myself, it's okay, you still have time for free dough. But then they became even more demanding of my time, and I admit, I lost perspective and became seduced for a while with all the attention and exciting opportunities. But I, I could not get back to working every one day. I knew that I was doing good party work, doing good community work with the party too. We were making... Making what? What did you make? You made this. What's out there? We didn't make this. You had your polyguana reawakening, and then what? You made nothing of substance. 
You manipulated and deceived and made misery for everyone. And you cut party. Then you had your ultimate big fat World Cup party. And now you have this all over the country. We didn't make this, this Spartanism. Whatever brutality these people are engaging in now, it doesn't change the fact that they deserve better pay and better working conditions. I know, so do a lot of people. What are you and your party pals doing about that, eh? Making more promises you can't keep? Shutting down more of your pathetic quick fixes? Taking illness when things can come? What are you ill? What are you doing to help us? Why don't you help us? Fuck you. You get paid a packet to sit in your ass. You don't need my help. What do you want from me? Nothing! I want you to go away! And I never want to see you again! <coughs> sure, hello, Beta. What can you tell me? She's going to labor. Oh, shit, man. Shit! Okay, I'm gonna try to get there now. I'm not sure I can get past the strikers. <coughs> Are you okay, Mira? Okay, right. Good work, nurse. Hopefully I'll see you in a few minutes. I have to see my patient. You're a good doctor. What are you going to do? I'm going to do what you told me to do. Go away. <laughs> Welcome to my office, advocates and Clovo. We're going to have to keep you, I'm afraid. Can't have you trying to run away from the hospital. Please. Don't do this, Nurse Robbie. Oh, Nurse Robbie, you're so polite. You must be polite too, Robbie. Treat the patients like you treat your own family. Doesn't matter they abuse you, they're stressed, and you've been trained to deal with that. And you must and you must be polite to the doctors and administrators too. Doesn't matter they're so cut with you, they're stressed. They got a really important job and you are their support. And stop complaining about your salary. You lucky you even got a job. But today. I say fuck you to all of that. What shall we do with you today, advocates? Shall we skin a fat cat? Listen to me. I, I, I don't have, I can't love you. I don't have the authority, specifically, to change anything for you. But you are here. You should be ashamed of yourself. Not only are you involved in an illegal strike, but you've lost all sense of humanity. And what do you know of humanity, huh? What kind of humanity do you show when you so easily misuse public funds while we're in a daily battle for survival? There are more people far worse off than you. That's why you should be ashamed. The, 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 the media, the police, they'll all call us barbarians, saying we're costing the economy millions. But you see, what we're doing here today, that's the only language you and your colleagues understand. That's the only way we're going to get... You'll recover. Are you okay? Yes, thank you. I, I saw him chasing you in the corridor, so I followed. Thanks, Logan. You saved me again. How long has it been? 17 years since that cop beat me up at Varsity. Look, I better try to get the police here. Wait, Logan. I, I need to tell you, to tell you the truth. And I never thought, I mean, all this, when we're making our plans at freedom, there was so much I was going to do. We were, I never thought I'd be here. At first the Patels were like any of the other party funders. But in time they made more and more demands, and got more and more favors from some of my senior colleagues. I had to make some of this happen. I couldn't question it, I was shut down. And then Minister Kekana said, this family from India was a blessing to our country. Not only would they bring, they would also bring black and Indian people closer again, he said. And so I allowed this company which I chaired to partner with the family's companies. We, we awarded them contracts. The thing is the Patels have the skills. They have the people who can deliver. But we didn't follow due process. 
company which I chair, we didn't disclose all the facts. Damn it, I know you don't need all the details, I'm sure. They cheated. I lied. I kept telling myself, but you know they are coming as really quality. Those projects will, will benefit your country, man. But they wanted more. They wanted too much. I didn't want to give them everything. So the party made me the fall guy. I'm not going to let them fuck me up the ass. I have to reveal. I, I deserve it. I deserve it. I'm living in the dirty grey now, Logan. I'm sorry. Forgive me. <laughs> so, show some respect and clean up your shit. We want this to be a classy joint. We agreed that this is not a place for the sugar addicts and the Wonga clan and Blue Boy. Hey, Blue Boy, I'll fucking bust you the next time you bring your Wonga addict prior. You have a nice attack in my head. I know everything that's going on there. And as for that Brandon Lighty, I haven't found him yet. I don't know where he's hiding in Shalcross, but when I find him and believe you me, I will. I'll make sure he pays for what he did to our place. Right, on to the big thing for today. I know for sure that the Naidu brothers from Mirbank want to move into our territory. I've got some good intel on the weekend. Now, you know these hoes are becoming big time and they got some lucky contacts in the South Coast. But uh, we don't want them yet. We do our own thing yet. We do things our way because this is our town. What you say? That's right, bruh. So I want uh, Regan, Yogi Bear and Babu to stay for a meeting after the party. Anyone else got some bright ideas? <laughs> <laughs> How we can deal with the Naidu brothers, you come see me later. Right. Time to party now. Got some lovely muffins from Sharon. Thank you, Sharon. <laughs> and now for the big one. I told you I'll get some lucky stuff for the weekend. Come on, brass. Let's have a joint. <laughs> Somebody see you! 
Why you told people I burned down the dome? Because you did. I never. Then one of your junky friends did. Don't call them. That they never do it. Did you even see anything? So who did it then? That brain lighty Brandon from Shell Cross. He and his brass did it. Call call us. They hate us. My God. We've come full circle. What are you talking about, buddy? Never mind, you wouldn't appreciate the irony. Don't act clever with me, Logan. I don't care what they come to me. I'm not going to let you intimidate me. You're a pest. And you're spreading your disease through this town. Even if you didn't burn off, you know, it doesn't matter. You and your junky friends have destroyed the place. You want to die, buddy? Huh? Not so steady on your feet, hey, addict. Logan! Yeah, run, you fucking coward! Run! Logan! I wish I could just shoot that fucking bastard! Yeah. You know who that is? Hi! No, I don't think so. It's a little Vinesh. All grown up now. Vinesh? What's going on? What are you doing here? Why can't you see you? I heard from your cousin Manish that you moved back to Chatsworth. What are you going to talk about? Some important things. Let's go somewhere. Fucking voicemail again. I know you're avoiding me, Maraj. Hello, Neil. Listen, I've had enough of your son now. He had a gun to my head just a few minutes ago. I told you to do something and you've done nothing. So I'm taking legal action now. Fair warning. What are you looking at? A new aunt in the rain? You think I'm the weirdo, eh? I think something wrong with me. I'm the victim here. Finesh Maraj is the sicko. And you, Mr. Manila? I told you about the lighting. So stop stealing out of your window and do something to stop the rot. Come on, people. Do something about the decaying neighborhood. How many more times do I have to tell you? In how many more ways? I've addressed you at the town hall. Uh-huh. I've sent you pamphlets. I'm shouting on the Jackfoot streets. But the whole black out now. Do you want me to break you? Come on, Logan. You're going to call the cops. Let's go somewhere. Let's go somewhere and talk! Wanna go somewhere and talk? Okay. Let's go to our place. What used to be our place. You can see what's become of it. Done before, and you rebuilt it. You can do that again. No, oh, it will be rebuilt. And your mirage will go even bigger now. And his multidisciplinary center of sporting excellence will meet with the municipality's approval after their shoddy investigations are complete and they can't find the people responsible for the fire. And the community will hail it as a wonderful place where their children can safely go for physical and mental stimulation. And then Binesh Maharaj and his cohorts will start dealing drugs at the back of the facility and start consuming their shit in the center's lounge again. And who knows, they might burn it down again and get away with it again. Come on, that's ridiculous. I knew Maharaj is a businessman. He can't keep throwing money away. And these petty criminals can't escape legal action. Maharaj has most of the cops here under his thumb. I can't expect them to help me. You can still do something about this. There are enough townsfolk who can help you on shore. This is not the Chatsworth you remember, Sunday. Oh, please. So many towns, so many of our towns are fucked up in so many different ways, but there are enough people who care, fighting back to make a difference. You can still get through to Anil. I've been trying to get to Anil for months, but he's built a wall around himself. And within this wall, he's still playing with his beautiful little boy who was conceived at freedom and was supposed to inspire an entire generation. You see, <laughs> and he just thinks that Vinesh is straight of it. That he'll come around again and be his father's son soon. And he thinks that a sports center and a few coaches will inspire the chats with you to come out of their drug infested dens and develop into champion athletes. Look, I'm not a cynic. I lost sport. But like with most things in this country, the wrong people are in charge, okay? What I'm saying is. My freedom project here is finished. Did you ever feel again in freedom? Like what you once felt on New Year's Eve? That night you were stopped a meal from a soldier's wife? What? Do you know what I'm talking about? 
No, I didn't feel that again. This is just a building. The spirit was inside you, inspired by your thoughts, feelings, and actions. You just had to locate it again. Why did you come to Chatsworth, Logan? The local hospital had hunted me. They needed a senior obstetrician. I wanted to serve my community. Plus, uh, after the divorce, I felt lonely in the city. I wanted to, you know, try to reconnect with my old neighbors. But some of them are mocking me now because the hospital suspended me. I heard about your suspension. What, what happened? Now, it's just hospital politics. I don't want to talk about but it. But you're fighting it, right? You have representation. Why, you want to be my lawyer? You know I can't practice law anymore. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry too. But so many things. I let myself down. I let you down. When you're in prison, there's so much time to think about all the mistakes you've made all the people you were wrong. I thought a lot about freedom and how excited I was about life when I was a part of that project. Is that why you came to Chatsworth today? Yes. <coughs> I heard that Anil Maharaj had turned it into a sports center. I didn't know about all this shit. But like I said before, this is just a building. We just need the will to do it. I mean, I mean when you and Samaya first started this, you didn't have the resources, but you believed. And you convinced others to believe. And to give you the money. We can do that again. We'll start in Chatsworth and we'll build. More than ever, we need an active civil society. We have to fight for our democracy. Look, I know you might be skeptical, skeptical about me because of what I did. You told the truth. You did your time. I did half my time. I was paroled after four years. Yes, I know it was political pressure. But don't worry, I'm not going to suck up to the party. Well, it doesn't matter now what you do politically, I mean. <coughs> you did some bad things, and you were punished. Yeah, I was punished. Some of my colleagues were punished. But the big brass got away. They always get away. Let's change that. Let's at least try. We need freedom now. I've spoken to a lot of people, youth organizations, women's organizations, business people, and I have some money from proper investments. Nothing legitimate. Look, I can't you just get into this right now. I have man. cancer, Logan. What? I have prostate cancer. I Start chemotherapy next week. I'm so sorry. But you know, nowadays with, with, with prostate cancer, if you catch it early, there's still a good chance of success stopping. Yeah, my doctor told me that. But you can't be sure, right? I mean, you know that. I don't want to be remembered as a corrupt politician and a dishonest lawyer. I'm 51 years old, I'm not married, I don't have children. I don't know what job I may ever have again if I live. So I have to do this. I don't want to say, if only. If only. I've said if only so many times. If only I hadn't left Chatsworth to begin with. If only I'd focus more on trying to be a good activist and less on trying to be a great doctor. If only I'd spend more quality time with my wife. If only Sunita hasn't miscarried. Maybe having a child would have made her feel more fulfilled. If only, if only I hadn't left those swaps in those women. What, what, what are you talking about, Logan? Swaps? There are two women who have sued the hospital because, because a careless doctor left swabs inside them after they gave birth. The swabs rotted inside them and they suffered horribly. I am that doctor. 
I blame the nurse, she blamed me. But it's my fault. I'm the senior doctor. My sister, I can't remember if I actually was the one who were. Oh, it doesn't matter. It was my room. I should be done. Oh! No matter what the circumstances. I was just so tired. So overworked. I, I wasn't always concentrating fully. But no one else is to blame. I could have asked for my workload to be reduced. I wanted to work, to keep working. And now I've hurt my patients. And I blame my staff for my shortcoming. So maybe I should be talking about drug addicts and their desperate family. And freedom. I'm dying in the dirty grave, Sunny. Sandile, thank you for coming. Why am I here? It's Vinesh's sentencing next week. Uh, they're saying that the judge will give him 20 years. 20 years. He'll be 41 when he comes home. He should get life. I know, I know. He has to be punished. I still can't believe. I still wonder how that beautiful little boy could have grown up into that a man who murdered someone I once proudly called my friend. Did you call me here to tell me that? I called you here to tell you that I'm sorry. I'm so sorry for what happened. I, I replayed the thing, everything I can remember about my boy in my head every day. I asked myself, were you a good dad? Shouldn't you have communicated more effectively? Shouldn't you have spent less time at work when he was in senior high school? You knew he was battling with a lot of stuff then. And you shouldn't have indulged him so much when he wanted to do his own thing after high school. You know, my wife told me, you, 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 you can't expect him to become a mature young man simply because you think he has a spiritual connection with a special place in the district. He doesn't have the gifts you think he has. She tried to do something, but I stopped her. I said, I, I said, I'll find the right balance between freedom and discipline. I should have listened to her. You should have. I should have listened more to my mother when she warned me about some of my party colleagues years ago. We should all listen to our wives and mothers and sisters. The men of this country have fucked it all up. We should let more women lead us. They may take us to a better place. Maybe you're right. I know I can't expect forgiveness for me, for Vinesh, but I'm saying sorry to Logan's family and friends. That's my karma. But I'm hoping when the sentencing is over, you and I can sit down and we can plan how we might rebuild freedom again in the original way that you and, and Zumeya and Logan were planning. That's my dharma. 
as Ali's takeaway has been here? Jeez. About 40 years now. Something still lasts. Come with me Down Paradise Road 